Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting. It's show number 169. That means next week's show is 170. That's like halfway to 200. That's halfway to 200, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, we are brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant Today. I don't know why that amuses me. That shouldn't be- Because I say that joke it's every not, week. It's not funny at all, but I, uh, but it makes me laugh. Uh, we're brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant, 1814 Washington Ave in Houston, and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth, you want to talk about a steak. These these man. guys. Oh, man. It's just like, we got to go. We, we're overdue for a trip to B&B. Overdue. Even if you don't want to eat there, you can go buy that dry-aged steak mm-hmm. and take it home and make it amazing. I don't know what this is that you speak of. This don't want to eat there. Well, <laughs> you know, if you have no, I understand other plans. Like, like you know, you you can't go there and put us on in the background and have a nice fire and stuff like that. Where you can at home and really create the mood by, mm-hmm. you know, making a really nice meal for your date, putting us on in the background. I was just say you're offering like Valentine tips a month I'm just early. Saying, yeah, yeah, this is good. I mean, this hey, is good. I like it. We're great like in the it. background. You know? <clears throat> yes, we. are. <laughs> Everybody likes to have smoking and toasting on when they're trying to set when they're the making mood out <laughs> for romance. That's uh, that's what we're. I mean, all I about. do it all the time. Come on, that's what we're all about, baby. Well, welcome <laughs> back to the show. It is uh, it is smoking and toasting. All right, how will we drink in twenty twenty? What are the trends that will shape and influence early and often? Early and often, I like it. Uh, the first one, and this is from an article on Liquor dot com, which, by the way, if I love you, Liquor.com. If you don't go there, it's a great website. You can go and like spend hours just reading. Dude, the, they're and good. They have great recipes. They're, yeah, too. they're good for all kinds of stuff. Cocktail yeah, recipes yes. and all kinds of interesting articles. Uh, the number one thing they say uh, on their list here is that uh, in twenty twenty we will be flooded with quote. Whiskey innovations, end quote. Uh, then they go on to say, it seems like every whiskey has a, about a bazillion line extensions coming down the pike, limited editions, experiments with mash bills. Uh, they say even weeded whiskey seem to be coming into favor. Uh, fancy barrel finishes, overproof variations that Chris Hart likes that burst with flavor but are almost too hot to drink. Uh, no doubt they say there are some amazing bottlings to explore, but it seems like there might be a few frogs to kiss before whiskey lovers find their prince charming in a bottle. And it also raises the question, is there a point of saturation with that? Your thoughts? Well, I don't think peanut butter and whiskey works. We tried that. You know, I I think we mentioned this on the show, but Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, that's like his favorite whiskey. I know. He loves the peanut butter whiskey. And you know what? And good for Screwball because <laughs> they found an audience, but it wasn't us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good for them. Um, they also uh, at number two on the list from Liquor dot com. Look for more low ABV and no ABV options in bars and at home. I, you know, I heard low ABV, and then what you said after that was kind of fuzzy. I don't- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of lost you, didn't I? <laughs> like, I'm not sure what you said. They uh, say, I, you know, uh, the low ABV thing. I think is a, is a trend that's been happening for a while, and I think I don't think it's going to go away because people want to be able to session beers. If you're going to go out to a barbecue and you're going to drink for four or five hours, you know, drinking barley mm-hmm. wines, which is something I'm have been accused of doing, <laughs> um, is maybe not the best idea. Right. But if you're drinking something that's in the 3 to 4%, that's a lot more you can, doable. You can hang for a lot longer and, yeah, and enjoy absolutely. yourself. Yeah, well, absolutely. and you're being responsible to yourself and others at that point. Because while I can drink a lot of barley wine, the results are vastly different socially. Well, even in the spirits category, they're talking about a, a raft, they say, of new no-alcohol bottlings. That are on the way. Uh, many of these are coming, they say, from Europe. Uh, pro- uh, products from the UK, Italy, uh, and Germany I, have been on display. I'm super recent confused things. by this. Is that like no alcohol whiskey? No alcohol whiskey, booze free. Uh, booze free uh, booze. Spirit, booze free booze. I, I don't. So think about this. Think about the tequila. Then what that, is it? Think about the tequila that we just had. Okay, and think about distillers trying to come up with a way. To create that flavor, so that you get the sensation of the flavors that we, you know, we're pointing out the butteriness and the pepper and all, that, but with it not having an alcohol component. Now it seems to me, and maybe this just because I love drinking alcohol, but it seems to me that it would lack the that last punch that it needs to have in order. Yeah, to feel the same. Like, um, like, wouldn't it feel too, 
I'm not uh, I'm not trying to like you know poo poo on on the uh, uh, concept of you know non alcoholic non alcoholic alcohol. alcohol, but but yeah, I I still I still wonder if it will work. I mean, look, we've had non alcoholic beer for years, and let's face it, it's terrible. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I, there's lots of low alcohol beers that are quite good. Yeah. But I can't think of a non-alcoholic beer there, that I really like. In okay, fact, yeah, that you really like. I can see a, a couple of reasons. If you if you're out and about, and you want to look like you're drinking beer, but you don't want to drink beer, you can get a non-alcoholic beer. And or if you're in the mood for that flavor, right? No, because we already decided it's terrible. <laughs> so what you do is you have them pour it in the glass, and then you look like you're drinking beer with everybody else. Okay, and it's but not that's just socially a, but weird. That's, but that's just about appearances. Yes, that's just about. In, in, why else would you drink in, no alcoholic in beer? Twenty twenty, it is totally okay to go. I'm just going to have a diet coke. Absolutely, you know what is. I mean. But some people are you know different. Well, then then what you've just done is taken away any reason to have no alcohol beer. Well, okay, so because uh, if you're in it for the flavor, let's just say. Hold on, where is it? Well, that's not the one I was looking for. I actually, think, but, but it works. It it has the same. Thing. You know, uh, every week when we do the show, I put together a. Uh, that's the one I was looking for. I put together a little sheet of, you know, articles and stuff that I found things that we could potentially talk about on the show if we've had time, and one of the ones that has been sitting on that list for months that we've never gotten to because usually there's other things that you know pop up or whatever, uh, but it's about. Um, Non-alcoholic beers. It's a list of non-alcoholic beers that have been basically reviewed. And the title of the article is, like, seven not bad non-alcoholic beers. So that's how it starts. Like, it's not, it's not even saying seven good non-alcoholic beers. It's saying seven, you, seven that maybe don't suck too badly is basically what they're getting When you're describing at. something as not bad, though, you are not describing it as good. Correct. You're just saying it so, isn't awful. Would you rather hump, have something that's not bad or have something that's good? Because I'd be honest with you, if it came to, I'd rather have a not bad non-alcoholic beer or a good Dr. Pepper. Right. I mean, that's a pretty easy choice, right? Exactly. And I'll tell you another thing, too. Is that One of the things I've learned is that rather than going for all the, you know, uh, low-fat, low-carb, fat-free, let's say, ice cream, Instead, just don't eat ice cream as often, and when you do, have a couple of scoops of real ice cream yeah. and enjoy it. But just don't like get out the pint and you know eat the whole thing. You know, to me, it's kind of like that. Like I'd rather have something really Quality. good and enjoy it in moderation than just a whole bunch of not bad. Yeah, drink to drink. Uh, number three on this list of uh, the way we will drink in twenty twenty, the fun factor will continue to be a draw. This is what it says. It says, it seems like everyone wants to build the ultimate adult theme park from drinks that channel childhood flavors like cereal, fruit roll-ups, and boozy popsicles to theme bars to distilleries with giant slides and boat rides and grammable glassware. Expect more whimsy with your drinking experience. I'm for it. Well, this show, I is went all, by, um, this show is all about whimsy. I went by uh, Eureka Heights because they did a, uh, for the New Year's, they did a special uh, glittery beer. Mm-hmm. And of course, I knew my wife would like that because glitter, glitter, G- because glitter, and it looks awesome when you pour it into the glass. <laughs> like it looks, and it's a total. It looks gimmick. like a special effect. Like it's, it's a total cool. gimmick, but that's yeah. all right. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was actually curious as how I was going to make my poo look, but whatever. <laughs> number four, <laughs> <laughs> best tangent of the day. Uh, number four, <laughs> better bar food compared to other countries where good food almost always accompanies a good pour. America has long uh, lagged behind, but bars are starting to catch up. San Francisco Chronicle re- uh, restaurant critic Salel Ho even declared a golden age of bar food in the Bay Area, a trend they'd like to see spread in the year ahead. Remember when you and I uh, and our wives uh, met at Mongoose and, Mongoose and Cobra recently. Yeah. That was great bar food. Yeah, I think I think places are starting to become you know, like you're going to try our food and it's going to be awesome too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I really enjoy that about it because it doesn't have to be uh, a complex. It doesn't have to be a three page menu. It, it can be one page of something good. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think a lot bar food fu- bar food is definitely going through a renaissance. And we can make better stuff really yeah. easy. We are not just 
we have a deep fryer and some frozen stuff because that's what bar food was for the longest time. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. bar food was bar food is deep fried. Number five brings up something interesting. It's a, it, they title it in the article "We'll Drink Hard," but it's about the hard seltzers and the hard. Uh, um, that's very popular. Now. Yeah, it said after the success of White Claw, uh, White Claw expects the other hard beverages follow: hard cold brew, hard iced tea, and hard kombucha. Uh, but make no mistake. Hard seltzer isn't going anywhere in 2020. Now, this, a lot of breweries are making it now. I will tell you. Um, somehow, I think it was. I think we got some stuff for a meeting, and it was left over, and it wound up being in my house. I had it wasn't a hard seltzer. It was like a hard uh, pineapple. Drink. I, oh, I tried it. It was horrible. Like it was like undrinkable. I poured it out in the drain. But I, I do like some of the hard seltzers. I've they, never they, actually tried They one. seem to work. We probably should do a, show, do a show about that. And maybe the right time to do that will be when the new hard seltzer is released from Bud Light. Yes, they are releasing Bud Light seltzer. <laughs> does seem pretty frightening, doesn't it? I mean, seriously, they've been advertising it and it's not even out yet. And and the ad just says it's coming soon or coming and it gives a date in January or February when it's going to be available. But Bud Light hard seltzer. Now I like hard seltzer and I like like some of the you know fruit flavors or whatever. I don't know if I want my seltzer to taste like beer, even good beer. Like know. you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, especially not Bud Light. But even even if you like Bud Light, is that what you want your seltzer to taste like? Mm. It doesn't seem quite right to me. No. Mm. The ultimate and bad line extension. Selfie bars are going to show up in your feed is number six. I don't know what that is. Mirroring the success of Rosé Mansion, uh, immersive experiences with uh, bars and made-for-Instagram experiences like the Museum of Ice Cream and Museum of Pizza and Color Factory. Expect bars to take cues from these selfie extravaganzas. So I think what this is really about is people spreading out their cocktail stuff taking the photos and then sharing it on Instagram. This kind of seems like a non-thing to me. I mean, it's fine. Do it. Enjoy it. I'll enjoy looking at it. But a trend? I don't know. If, I don't know if that's a trend. Flavored gins are coming though. Here's an interesting one. I like flavored vodkas, but with juniper, flavored gin has been on a tear in England. Now producers in the US uh, are saying they think it'll uh, be something people develop a taste for here as well. What do you think about that? I think gin has been having a bit of a renaissance, especially with the onset of a bunch of aged gins. Like almost everybody's making mm-hmm. an aged gin now. Yep, yep. And it and gin the flavor of gin lends itself to the aging too. I think it's I, I found a few aged gins that I really like. Mm-hmm. Um and it's not just juniper flavors that come out anymore. Right, right, know, right. It's all kinds of. Well, they're talking about you know, sour cherry and lemon drizzle and all kinds of. If they make uh, a blueberry, like I'm all about it. Blueberry, blueberry gin. aged gin. So, um, I tried some blueberry vodka that was actually quite good. I didn't think I would like it, and I really did. <laughs> I was. Uh, I was uh, quite interested. And then I thought, this has got to be a martini. Like, this has got to be super cold. I bet. In a martini glass. So I bet. You know, and, and that's why I like, right. see, I like gin martinis. So I like yeah. the aged gin and the martinis. I Usually when I make a martini, I make it very dirty because I, like, mm-hmm. I like the flavors in there. But when you use an aged gin, you don't need to make it all that dirty. You just enjoy the gin. Because let's, let's be honest, martini is the Italian word for big ass shot. You know, I mean, that's just liquor. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. With some ice. Super cold liquor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you shake it until the the whole shaker is frozen. Yeah, right. And, and then you drink it. And it's best if ice crystals form on the top of it when you pour it into the glass. That's right. That's when it's really good. Uh, uh, final thing on the list, we'll enjoy better drinks in weirder places. They say, no, we're not talking about pop-up bars in crazy places, although that's always a possibility. Rather, this refers to canned cocktails. That's what I had that was so awful. That I was, it was a canned cocktail. You know, we talked about drinks Ooh, in weird places a bad. few weeks back. Mm-hmm. We talked about the uh, whiskey pods in the butt. Yes, that's right. That, that, is, is, the that is definitely place, a weird the place The weirdest for place drink. so far. Uh, <laughs> boxed wine, wide range of other ready-to-drink options like whiskey pods, uh, that are available to go places traditional drinks can't go. (laughs) Well, there you go. There you go. Uh, For example, some train stations, they say, now have well-stocked 
grab-and-go coolers that rival what might be found at a traditional uh, liquor store ready to grab and take on to the rails. Airports and sports arena concessions are starting to offer uh, a wider array of ready-to-drinks, and that trend is set to expand quickly. So those those are the things that they they think you will see more of in 2020. I think the hard seltzer thing is going to be huge. Hard seltzer is definitely going to be yeah, huge. It's, it's be, too easy to drink. Yeah, too too yeah. Uh, uh, too much momentum behind it already, and uh, and then and not quite as carbonated as Zima. <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> thank God for that. I remember when you know back in my days of doing radio and doing club gigs, you know you would go out and you would host a club night on a Saturday night or whatever. I remember when Zima arrived on the scene and it went from being in a bar where you saw everybody with a beer or a cocktail in their hand yep. to looking out and seeing everyone with a Zima in their hand. It was like with almost, a Jolly Rancher in it. It was almost universal, and then just as quickly, uh, about a year later, it Gone. died. Gone, and you didn't see him anywhere. Uh, you ready to do some uh, peanut butter pastry stout from King Size? I am. It's not from King Size. It's actually uh, no. It's from um, <clears throat> Seven Stills. Brewery Seven Stills in the Brewery. Story. Yeah, and Seven Stills is uh, from San Francisco, California. San Francisco. The Jessup Farm uh, Barrel House that we had earlier, by the way, was from from Fort Collins, Colorado. That's that's where they're located. So, ooh, that was nice. That was very nice. Um, I'm really excited about trying this stout. Smells like peanut butter. I'm not surprised. <clears throat> Generally, when something says peanut butter on it, if it's beer, you're going to get a well, pretty good nose of peanut, peanut butter. butter. Peanut butter is one of those things that can't be denied on the <laughs> nose. Like You can say it's a cinnamon beer and not smell cinnamon, but you're never going to say it's peanut butter and not smell peanut butter. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or peanuts in general are kind of like that. Wow. What do you think? This smells wow. like a Reese's Pieces, actually. It's it's like you took a Reese's Pieces, uh, or a Reese's like a, peanut butter a, cup, a bag yeah. of Reese's Pieces or a Reese's peanut butter cup, dumped it into coffee, let it dissolve, and drank it. Well, let me see. Mm. That is, it's really quite delicious. Really good. Yeah. It really is. I worry sometimes about these peanut butter stouts because we've had a few that were like, Meh. okay, I get it. They're peanut butter, but I didn't enjoy them that much. No, this is super drinkable. This is wonderful. This is more carbonation than I would ever expect in a stout either, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and it works with this particular beer. Usually, I would immediately be like, this is too much carbonation in here, but- so I'm going to be honest. I was actually There's worried. something about the way it makes the peanut butter kind of tickle the tongue and then finishes it with mm-hmm. coffee. Um, uh, there's more coffee in this than that, I would have expected. There's that that uh, that that flaky pastry with uh, with powdered sugar kind of thing going on. Thus, it being a pastry style. Yeah, yes. it's it's like and a little butteriness to it, mm-hmm. kind of almost. We've, we've had a couple buttery things going on today. Well, I, I'm going to tell you this. Even though I was excited about all of the beers we were trying today, there was this little nagging worry in the back of my brain that it was possible we could dislike all three of them. <laughs> you know well, I mean? they were all a little polarizing. Right, right because you've got a, a definitely a hoppy IPA, which I knew I would probably like, but I thought you might not like it. Uh, and then we had the Farmhouse Ale, which, I mean, it could have gone either way. It was how come, delicious. But how come no one way. has named a... Uh um, hazy IPA, cloudy with a chance of hops. I think somebody has. This should be. I think somebody. Um, has. I'm going to say. I bet if you Google that, a uh, beer I, will come up. <laughs> it's it says Seven Stills, but I keep reading it as Stephen Stills. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I did this every same time thing. I look at it. It says Stephen Stills. Uh, Seven Stills uh, Brewery and, and Distillery. A road. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, uh, Seven Stills Brewery and Distillery Hype Can Series release number 045 style chocolate peanut butter pastry stout. That is literally all the information they give you on here. Um, 12.1%. It doesn't drink at 12.1%. No. It doesn't like, feel wow, like that at all. Not at all. It it's doesn't feel like that at all. Peanut buttery. It's delicious. Um, it's it's mouthfeel is almost, I think because of the extra carbonation in there, the mouthfeel doesn't feel quite as thick. Thick. You're right. It isn't as viscous as you might be expecting. Even though in the glass it kind of looks like it. 
it almost looks like motor oil in the glass. This this needs uh this needs further research, advanced <laughs> research. <laughs> did go. we even pour any of that for Adam? Oh, we did. Okay, good. Just making sure we did. We're we're taking well, care of our. Uh, I'm I'm pretty impressed with the king size. I have to I have to pour him beer. Or he'll just put the camera on you. Yeah, the whole well, time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> I, I, got, I got I got to work it somehow, you know. You know so if well, I if I go to him and say, Adam, you know, uh, I noticed you you had a lot of camera um, on cruise last time. He's like, yeah, I didn't get a lot of beers. <laughs> <laughs> He's not really like yeah, that, but it's no, funny to think yeah. about. Well, I have to tell you, this has been a very interesting tasting show, uh, and and it's really, uh, I think we chose more interesting. Not more interesting than usual, but it was definitely an unusual lineup of things to taste today. It was, it was, uh, yeah, the beers that we had today, like, are, are very unusual, actually. The normalest one we had was the the, mm-hmm. the super grapefruit winter IPA. Winter IPA. Yeah, from St. Arnold. Yeah. I like that there's snowflakes on us. St. Arnold's from Houston. There's snowflakes on this can. I like that it says 100% chance of And hops. we see snowflakes here in uh, in Houston yes, about, about once, once every five or seven yeah, years. Yeah, five, seven years. That's right. That's right. Which is almost exactly once a blue moon, right? How many how many years is a blue moon? Uh, um, that's a very good question. Uh, Wiki Brian, help us out here. How Somebody knows. Yeah. Uh, I will say this. When I first moved back to Houston from uh, living up in uh, New England, uh, the first year I was back, it snowed, and uh, I was sitting. I was at my house. I was just, like working on the computer, and I'm looking outside and seeing it snow. And I thought, oh, I have to go to the grocery store right now because these people in Houston have no idea how to drive in this, and they're going to be crazy. Oh yeah, they're going to And kill I everybody. raced out to the grocery store because I needed, you know, milk or whatever, beer probably. So uh, Brian Wiki Brian says uh, Grand Armory Brewing has cloudy with a chance of hops. Mm-hmm. So yes. He also said, "Gin question mark Renaissance question mark Gin needs to die a fiery death." Oh, I just don't a, really know a, how he a, feels about gin. He's not a gin fan. I didn't realize. I that. think he likes gin about as much as he likes IPAs. <laughs> well, that clears it up. <laughs> that, that really does. Well, uh, I want to thank uh, you guys for coming along and enjoying the tasting experience with us, and uh, enjoying our little look at uh, 2020 and the decade to come. Yeah. I think it's going to be a very interesting one, and I'm really psyched actually about some of the things that we have. Uh, in store for you for smoking and toasting for 2020. We will, of course, be getting to. We're about halfway there now. Our uh, our 200th episode, and after the hundredth was such a debacle, uh, we're going to have to. I, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to have to go way well, over the top. You guys have let us stick around long enough. I think we might have to start thinking about merch. <laughs> I like the idea. <laughs> I like the idea. Well, uh, thank you to everyone. Uh, involved in helping uh, put the show together today. Thanks to everybody for checking us out on Facebook and uh, and on the and watch party. Uh, we haven't wa- done that. So the watch party, how did that go? It went great. I've got a uh, uh, a bunch of people, a bunch of my old school friends and uh, family members and stuff like that showed up on that. It's very cool. Uh, hey, you guys, uh, do me a favor. Even if you hate what we do, mm-hmm. that's fine. Still like me and uh, go on to YouTube and sign up and um, and uh, subscribe to the channel. And hit the little bell to let you know whenever we got new content coming out and everything like this. Everything you see here will be posted up on uh, YouTube. So if you miss it, you can come back and see it. Or if you again, if you want to put it on the background when they got a fire going and do and, your yeah, uh, absolutely uh, do your romantic evening, like we're great like that. You know? And I'm not saying we're all that in a bag of chips, but some of the crap that I've seen on YouTube that has like hundreds of thousands of views, like you guys help us out. We're better than that. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. We need to do like a fail video reel, right? Oh, I think that's what we <laughs> <laughs> Smoking and toasting fails. <laughs> Many of them would involve that little sound effects box that you have there. Uh, it's when we, when the wrong sound effect comes out. It's pretty uh, funny when I mean one thing and something else comes out. Yeah, right? absolutely. It happens a lot. Exactly. I, but see, I knew you were going for that one this time. So. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know it was going to be first time? Get know, out of my head. That's creepy. Sometimes it's just... No, know. I mean, really, it's creepy in there. You don't want to be in there. I don't even want to be in have there. Have a uh, great week, my friend. Thanks to Adam on the Wheels of Steel uh, for producing the show. And have a wonderful week. We'll see you back here next week for show number 170, which we will celebrate by calling it show number 170. We are officially halfway to 200. Absolutely. And we're looking forward to it. Have a great week, everybody. And uh, uh, cheers. Cheers. Chocolate, peanut butter, pastry. So delicious.